Still no sign of our girl. Thank you to everybody for your kind words. But I don't want today to be a downer kind of day because today is kind of a big day. Good morning, large white farm dog. How are you guys doing, huh? Hey, buddy. So Toby, it is a very big day today. It is a very, very big day. Come on, Toby, inside. It is a huge day for him. Yes, my friends, today is officially the day that you can order Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm, our new novel all about Mr. Toby Dog and his adventures here coming to the farm. Abby, would you like me to read this to you? I will. Yeah, maybe at the end of this video, I'll read this book to both of you. Yes, this is a novel that I've spent years trying to get made, but today is officially the day that you can get the digital version, the print version, or even the special audiobook version. And I'm really excited for you guys to follow along with Toby's adventures. But we also have a whole heck of a lot of adventure to go after today here, buddy. If I didn't know any better, I would say that this hive is probably starting to get ready to split. And based on the lesson that I learned earlier this summer of always having a beehive ready and on hand, in case some of my bees start to swarm, I'm gonna go get that hive set up later today so that I'll be able to catch those bees if they decide to go somewhere. And that will mean one more hive of bees that we're gonna have on the farm. Morning, Mama Rosie. How are you guys doing? You're doing such a good job, Mama Rosie. Aren't you proud of Mama Rosie, Toby? Of course, I do need to give Mama Rosie some fresh drinking water. Of course, we'll hook the weird chickens up with some fresh drinking water too. Any eggs? No? Captain Janeway, you gotta stop being so broody, girl. You're not hatching any babies this year, face it. You should be my least broody weird chicken, but that is not the case. Hey, Mr. Frizzle, hey, Bet. By the way, if you're curious about what sort of mother Rosie is, just take a look at Rosette here. She was one of Rosie's babies from last year. Yeah, that's the spirit, Captain Janeway. Eat your grain. Good morning, birds. How's everybody doing this morning? So if you guys don't know the story of Toby Dog, let me at least give you a little teaser and recap. So back in 2019, when my farm was simply just a duck farm, I was dealing with some significant significant problems related to predators. There was a mink that broke in for a couple nights and killed a couple of ducks and maimed a bunch of ducks. And then later in 2019, there was a bobcat stalking my farm. Can you freaking believe it? A bobcat? just like about 25 feet away from me while I'm doing duck chores while the sun's still out. And I was having a very, very hard time keeping my birds safe from predators. And I first started off by trying to fight the predators with trapping, which I've since learned is very much a fool's errand. And it doesn't really solve the problem of predators attacking your birds. And in fact, in some situations, it can exacerbate it. Well, a buddy of mine who's actually a sheep farmer, he was using livestock guardian dogs as a way to protect his sheep from coyotes. And in fact, his male livestock guardian dog, who is a Maremma, which is a special Italian breed of livestock guardian dog, well, he was actually in the process of siring a litter of puppies. And because my friend's dog was the father, he was gonna get to have a choice of a puppy from that litter. And so that is the origin of Toby Dog. And so up on a duck and dog farm up in Maine, uh, a litter of puppies was born and uh, we had one of them willed to us. Black Friday, so the day after Thanksgiving, Toby, at about three months of age, showed up here on the farm.
Hey, Toby Dog, are you ready for the chaos? I gotta admit, with all of the birds I have back here right now, feeding time always becomes extreme chaos in this day and age. <laughs> So the teenage geese have figured out that this stuff tastes good. And it really is their last couple weeks of life. And so this is like their final chance to fatten up before they go for butchering. And by the way, if you want to buy a goose, we still have a few available over at Goldshaw Farm. But yes, right now it's kind of off the chain. <laughs> You're so good for putting up with all that, buddy. Oh yes, you are so good for putting up with all that. That is what makes you such a magical and special dog. That and your incredible heart. So I have a couple of geese that are actually getting ready to start laying eggs. I can tell based on the behavior of the flock. Whenever you see a couple of ganders fighting like you just witnessed, that is usually a sign that at least a few of those females are getting ready to breed. And those ganders are battling for the rights to be the one to breed her. Most goose eggs get laid in the springtime, but I'll occasionally have like two or three females that start laying eggs in the fall. I don't usually hatch those eggs because it's too cold for me to want to raise goslings that late in the year. But I usually end up sending them to friends who live in like southern, more warmer climates. I know, Toby Dog. Goose mating season is always stressful, whether it's the spring cycle or the fall cycle. And yes, I don't know if you guys notice just how chill Toby Dog is when he's around the chaos of the geese. That's actually why he's such a special livestock guardian dog. His breed of dog, the Maremma, is often used to guard poultry, especially in places like Australia. In fact, they've even used Maremmas to guard penguins in Australia. And that's why Toby Dog makes such an incredible guardian of all the ducks and geese and chickens. Because even when they're at their most chaotic, he's at his most calm. Hey, you're Ron Swanson, how's it going? So last year I had a goose hatch out some goslings, but she was doing a terrible job as being a mother and she let a couple of her goslings die. And so the lone remaining gosling, I actually took away from her and decided to raise myself. But it's never ever a good thing to try to raise a gosling by itself. And so because I had some baby ducks at the time, I decided to take one of the ducklings and raise it side by side with the goose. The duckling was just a couple of days older than that gosling at the time. So they seemed like they'd be perfect companions. And in fact, they ended up being perfect companions and became best friends. I named the gosling Frank and I named the duckling Bean. And now for all of those folks who are wondering whatever happened to Frank and Bean. Well, this duckling right here in the foreground, that's actually Bean all grown up. She's a khaki Campbell Cayuga cross. And so you can see she's actually starting to get white feathers. I'm pretty sure that that's her mother right there in the foreground. And so eventually her dark feathers will turn all white like that. And then this goose right here, that's actually Frankie, all grown up. I originally thought she was a female, but it turns out she is a he and spends most of her time hanging out with the Parks and Recreation Gang, which is the best friends of Ron Swanson, who's the duck who thinks she's a goose. The barnyard can be quite crazy sometimes. Now you guys might be noticing that some of my geese have wings that look kind of weird. What that is is actually a condition called angel wing. It's a genetic condition that gets brought on particularly by dietary factors. And so I've had a number of geese deal with it over the years, and I think it's actually a genetic flaw in my breeding group. Over the last couple of years, I've done my best to try to eliminate it and pull it out, but I'm just not having much luck. And so I do think this fall, when I do my goose harvest, I'm gonna have to cull more than I usually do in order to get that strain out of my birds. Part of the reason why you actually see me feeding them so much, much more than I usually would at this time of year, is because I'm finding that the extra feed is triggering the angel wing and a couple of extra birds and it's helping me identify it a little bit more but I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to pull out most of my pilgrim geese because I think that's where the strain is coming from I know it definitely sucks hey Kess come on Kess hey Kess come on Kess you see him coming yep there they go Come on, girls. So these two heifers have actually been kept separate from the rest of my herd this year because I wanted to give them a chance to grow and get much larger it's okay sweetie 
I'm just here to visit. I don't have any alfalfa for you, but I'm just here to visit. They're actually half sisters and they will be part of my breeding herd next year, but I didn't want to breed them yet because they're so small. And so my goal is they're going to start getting bred probably at around, uh, let's see, about 28 months they'll be when I actually put them out with the bull next summer. And that extra time gives their bodies more chances to develop and it creates less problems when they're having their pregnancies and ultimately delivering. And so they will be making babies with Macho Man next year. But for this year, I've just been keeping them down low and giving them a chance to eat here in the permaculture orchard. And I've also been spending a lot of time with them and getting them used to me. I mean, as you can see, I can get them to come when I call them. And ultimately, I might try to milk them when they do have babies. You see, a Scottish Highland cow produces milk that has a similar butter fat profile as say a, a Jersey cow and so because of that I actually have tried to milk my cows in the past one of my cows Ariel has let me milk her before and I was actually doing it for a little while back in November of 2022 I think I'm gonna try the same thing with these girls too when I get the chance it's not like I'm gonna become a dairy farm but I've been very curious about trying to regularly milk an animal and they feel like my best possible candidates especially because of the effort I've been putting into training them this summer would you guys look at that so that is a volunteer apple tree it's not something i planted it's something that popped up here wild there's actually a couple wild apple trees right on the border there and so my guess is an apple rolled down the hill ended up right here and that's what's been growing but as you can see the geese and the cattle have been chomping on it i will actually probably try to dig this guy up this fall when it goes dormant and then i'll move it to another spot on the farm in our climate here in northern vermont apples grow like absolute weeds she'll come and lick me when i do have a treat but she's always more skittish when i don't but yeah i just try to spend time with her both of them. If I had to guess, I think actually Belinda is the more likely one to get milked. Bonnie McMurray, why are you so unattainable? Come on in and let's check out the pumpkin patch. What do you think, Abby Dog? You excited for this pumpkin patch? I know, we got pumpkins everywhere here. Even pumpkin blossoms that I might try to eat. I don't know. So these are New England sugar pumpkins. Oh, Abby, really, do you have to do that? Do you really? I guess the expression isn't don't pee where you eat, so. But you can see, um, actually, the amaranth, and, or pigweed as you might call it, still seems like it's doing pretty well, and that'll be available for the birds when they move in here. Yeah, I usually have 50 pumpkins laying on the ground in here. They're scattered pretty much everywhere. I mean, so even though the birds did a lot of destruction, the pumpkin crop survived very well and is very, very strong in here. And for as many orange pumpkins as you might see, there's probably twice as many green pumpkins that are in here. I still feel like I'm gonna have plenty of time growing in here because it's inside the greenhouse. That was all part of my plan. You know, I started these pumpkin seedlings indoors. I transplanted them out here once I moved the birds out and they've just been going wild all summer and they will be able to go pretty late into the fall. But I actually think these pumpkins keep going for another three weeks-ish or so because it gets so warm in here. But like pretty soon I'm gonna start closing the doors and keeping this closed, which will retain more heat. I'm actually not doing that right now because because it gets so hot. Like, you know, it's 64 degrees right now as I'm recording this. It's gonna get much hotter today. And so I wouldn't wanna close everything off and I'll probably even vent it a little bit so that it doesn't get too hot in here. But this will stay warm for weeks to come and I have a lot of pumpkin room growing still. Abby's jealous. She thinks Toby's stealing his, her pumpkin. You don't need to be so jealous, girl. There's enough pumpkins for everybody. Yeah, I think this pumpkin actually got killed and it doesn't look all that good. So we're gonna pull it. This was maybe one of the few pumpkin plants that the geese just trashed. It's not a very good pumpkin, but I bet the pigs are gonna like it. Maybe Pablo Barncat likes it. You know, Pablo Barncat actually has a pretty big role in the Toby Dog book. Lil Barncat also has a big role. The book actually takes place back in like late 2019 and early 2020, back when Pablo and Lil were the two barn cats patrolling the farm. And not to spoil the whole book for you guys, but Toby Dog and the barn cats actually start out as enemies. How are the Piggly Wigglies, huh? Look what I got. Who wants it? Who wants it? You want a cutie? You want it, sweetie? How about Big Red? No? Here, I'm gonna toss it, see who gets it. They don't seem interested in it. I've noticed if they can't smell, like if it's not exposed fruit or food, they don't seem nearly as interested. But it looks like Big Red is starting to get interested, so let's see what happens there. Oh, looks like Cutie figured out how to open the pumpkin. Unfortunately, these girls won't be around when Halloween comes. All my neighbors tend to give me their old Halloween pumpkins, you know, like November 1st and beyond. And I use that to actually feed the ducks and geese too. I actually put out a huge dump cart of apple drops that I got from some neighbors just yesterday and I don't see a single one left over. These girls are definitely packing on the pounds. All right, Abby Dog, let's go. It's your favorite time of the morning. Come on, sweetie. 
Out we go. That's right, you know what time it is. Did you guys look at this? I fixed the muddy spot. So I went through and did some tractor work yesterday and repaired all of that. Actually, was it yesterday? No, it was a couple days ago. I'm losing track of my days because I've got so many projects, like little projects to do before winter really hits. I'm also getting a little bit sad that I won't be doing these bike rides nearly as much anymore in the not too distant future. One of my biggest fears about the farm this year was that I was gonna have trouble managing it because it was gonna be spread out over so much more space. But the e-bike has made such a massive difference and it's also just been a heck of a lot of fun. Here's another apple tree just for an example of when I say apples grow like weeds. Like there's a baby apple tree, another baby apple tree, a whole bunch of apple drops that I'll come by and pick up for the pigs later. Grass, apples, and maple trees are like the things that grow the easiest here in our climate. Which pegging off some comments from an earlier video this month, you know, thinking about your climate and what works best for you is always in your best interest. Come on, Abby, inside, let's go. Here, go visit the cows. So it's another foggy morning. I think that's another thing I'm gonna miss about late summer, early fall. It's so peaceful and serene coming out here like this. In fact, there's even some cool stuff I don't usually show you guys, but I'm having one of those moods this morning and I want to. Look at this spider web. I don't even know if you can see it from this angle. I mean, would you look at that? That's just beautiful. Spider web popping up in the grass. We got another one right here, another one right here. I don't see any spiders though. Like there's an entire secret micro world that I barely even explore on this farm with our videos. Sometimes I wish I would just stop and take more time to watch. Like, I'm not even sure what that is insect-wise, but whatever it was, it made a feast for a spider, that's for sure. So this area right here will be some of the last grasses the cattle eat before they go in for winter. That timing is gonna be really dictated more by like how long can I keep moving water out to them versus anything else. Abby, would you look at this? You got two of the spiders right here. Let's take a closer look at them. How's it going there, lady? Good to see ya. You're just waiting for your morning meal, aren't you, girl? Maybe you'll lay some eggs like Charlotte in Charlotte's Web. You know, Charlotte's Web was actually one of the things that really inspired me in writing the Toby Dog book. I remember when I read that book as a kid, like the entire secret world of animals was unlocked for me. And part of what I was hoping to do in writing the Toby Dog book was to like unlock a similar type of world for kids in this day and age. And so honestly, that's one of the things I hope to accomplish with this book. Abby, are you yarkin'? What's up there, girl? And just a fair warning to parents, there is a poop joke in the Toby Dog book. But I mean, what kid doesn't like a good discussion of poop, right? Toby searched the edge of the fence near the woods, looking, listening, and sniffing near the edge of the pasture. Occasionally, he gave a bark of warning. But no monster nor any other animal showed itself. Hey, partner, what are you barking at? The gravelly voice sounded behind him again. Toby whipped around to look for the owner of the voice. There sat a smallish black animal with a white stripe running from the top of his head all the way down to his bushy tail. A skunk! Skunk? I don't think I've ever met a skunk before, said Toby. But I do remember my mother telling me to never pick a fight with one, or I'd find myself sleeping in a bathtub full of tomato juice. Whatever that meant. Well. Let me warn you, Mr. Monster, I am not to be trifled with. While I may look small and fragile, I possess some seriously great powers. Just last week, I encountered a gigantic cat that was five times the size of you. <laughs> she tried to eat me whole, but I gave her a stinking she will never forget. A stinking? inquired Toby. Yes, sir. Contained within my body is a set of scent glands that propel forward a powerful spray that stings and stinks anything it touches. Well, I can make stinky poops, said Toby. And it was true. When Toby made his doggy poops, they were often quite smelly. Ha! <laughs> Brother. My spray is 1,000 times stinkier than any poop you've ever made. You know, another really cool feature of the Toby Dog book is that my really good friend Jessica Sowards from Roots and Refuge Farm, if you guys aren't familiar with her, go check out her YouTube channel and tell her Toby Dog says hello. She actually wrote the foreword of the book for me. And I gotta admit, when I first read it in a couple of things that she said in the foreword, it made me cry. And uh, yeah, I'm just, 
very grateful that she wrote the forward of the book and that I have her as a friend because, yeah, she's just an amazing person. And Jess, if you're watching this, seriously, thank you. I am extremely lucky to have you as a friend. And I'm extremely lucky to have you guys as chickens. What you doing on the can there, Deb? I'm gonna hook you girls up with some fresh food. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. Hey, Kels, come on, Kels, fresh grass, fresh grass, come on. How's it going, Anna Green Gable? Good to see you, Joey Ramon. Hi, Ariel. Hey, Annabelle. Would you look at how much Baby B has grown? Like, would you look at this? So, this was Baby B the 4th of July, shortly after she was born. And this is Baby B now. She is turning into like a little mini cow. For a side-by-side -side comparison, this is her against Joey Ramone. This is her side-by-side -side with Macho Man. So she's got a ways to grow. She's definitely getting bigger. I'm also noticing that she's eating a lot more grass, but she is still very, very skittish. Actually, I just realized how much of a blur this summer has been. She wasn't born the 4th of July. She was born like mid, late June. But still, that right there that you're seeing is three months of calf growth. That mother's milk stuff is pretty darn impressive. You Definitely not gonna need to work out this morning. Wow. Yeah, this thing has worked well, but I gotta do a redesign this winter. When the grass gets too tall, it gets really, really hard to move and it gets stuck. And I still haven't come up with a wheel system that works. The other thing you might notice is this bovi rub thingy here. Usually people will use this to put like permethrin or other like anti-insect chemicals on their cattle. Sometimes I use like ivermectin even too. I have sort of a special herbal blend that I'm testing out to see if it actually makes any difference with the cattle. So far it's almost too soon to tell, but I'll let you know. If you're wondering about the ingredients, I'll flash them up here on the screen so you can do the same experiment at home, but I am not vouching for it working yet. Come on, baby dog, let's go. Come on, Abby. Unless you want to stay up here today. Nah, I figured you want to come down. Again, for those who've missed me commenting on this in other videos, the experiment with Abby staying on the upper pasture has been called off for this year. And we will explore a new game plan for 2024. Good morning, solar panels. Keep making us energy. Okay, you little scavengers, time for your food. Hang on. You two mean this so much to me. Here, Pablo, that's for you. That's for you, Jenny. Yes, you've noticed I've gone down to only two bowls. And that was actually a heartbreaking change. Like I said earlier, no new news on Molly Murder Mittens. I'm not 100% writing her off yet, but she just had to cancel her upcoming annual vet checkup because there's no cat to check up. I will eventually make a video about Molly Murder Mittens. but I'm just not ready to do that right now. But her story will live on, I promise you that. You know, one question folks have recently asked me is if I'm still collecting Toby Dog fur in order to make a Toby Dog sweater. The answer is no, I'm actually not. I had been collecting it for a couple of years and like the big bag of fur that I actually started to build up got moldy and so I had to throw it out. And after I did that, I don't know, I was kind of just defeated and so I kind of gave up on the project to be quite honest. But the truth of the matter is apparently dog fur doesn't make for a great sweater or scarf anyway. But I still brush Toby, I don't know, probably three or four times a week. Abby, I only brush once a week because she's got such a thin coat but toby dog's fur is so thick that he really needs it and he also really likes it it's a good chance for me to just hang out with him and bond it's moments like this that are really good for my soul i did want to say that today on the day that i am releasing this toby dog book thank you to all of you guys because i am incredibly grateful to have the opportunity to be here on this farm to make these videos and even be able to offer a book like that. And to be able to do any of it would be completely impossible without the help of you guys. You are all a part of this farm and you mean the world to me. And I know I probably don't say it enough, but on a moment like this, I did want to just say thank you to everybody for all of the love and support. And yeah, if you want to check out Toby Dog of Goldshaw Farm, be sure to check it out. It goes on sale officially today. Thanks for watching everybody.